The race is on to save our southern resident orcas after a new study shows the killer whales are on a faster track to extinction. Meteorologist Leah Pizzetti with our Environment Northwest team looks at how long it could take to reverse this decline and save the species. If we didn't change anything today, given the current circumstances, would we be able to save this population? If we do nothing, we will lose this population forever. Right now, there are exactly 74 southern resident killer whales, a decrease of 24 since the 90s. Around here, they're iconic, so we all get our hopes up when there's a new calf. We all grieve collectively when one dies. We know when the population goes up or down by one individual. Rob Williams, co-founder of nonprofit Oceans Initiative, has devoted his career to studying orcas. Oh my God. Oh my God. He says a goal of 2.3% growth per year for 28 years was set, hoping to get the population totals back into the 90s. Instead, over the last 30 years, there's been a decline of 1.5% every year. The Center of Whale Research estimates there were about 98 orcas in God. the mid 90s to the now 74. So this has been decades in the making? Yes. Why has it taken so long to correct it? Oh, the first problem is that you have to you have to quantify how big the problem is and it takes decades of science. So that's what Rob is doing. He and a team of 17 scientists recently published a study digging into the data to see what the reality of population recovery actually looks like. William says of the 74 southern resident orcas right now, about half are female. A portion of those are either too old or too young to reproduce. That leaves about a dozen female orcas carrying the population. With a 17-month gestation period, each would only have a calf every three to five years, and historically speaking, about half of calves die, so they won't all make it. This means that with the assumption that older whales are also dying during this time frame, it would take 50 years to grow the population by 15 to 20 whales. So we have to manage our expectation that we didn't get into this situation overnight and it will take a long, long time for us to recover. This research also looks at the causes of this decline. Williams says the top factor is a lack of food, Chinook salmon specifically. Second, noise contamination. Whales use acoustic sounds to listen for salmon and hunt. Too many boats and noises make it hard for them to feed. And third, contaminants like plastic and forever chemicals in the food they do eat. What should we do? Well, the whales are telling us that they need a lot more salmon. This, he suggests, could come down to reducing Chinook salmon harvest, increasing hatchery production, or stopping catching Chinook salmon in the open ocean to leave them for the orcas. What happens if we lose this population? I don't even want to think about losing this population. I can't imagine the Salish Sea, the Pacific Northwest, without our iconic killer whales and Chinook salmon. We've seen this in cases from California to Alaska, that if you remove the top predators, um, the lower trophic levels, the system collapses like a house of cards. And that system is our oceans. That's our, that's our Salish Sea. That's what we call home. So it is possible to help. We just have to actually do it. I think the number one thing I want people to learn from this study is that populations have bounced back from much, much more severe genetic bottlenecks than this. And that is the hope. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Leah Pizzetti.